Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to talk about a Roja Dove, a very expensive Roja Dove, uh, but one that has some controversy as of late, some drama, if you will. Uh, and it is the fragrance of Chypre Extraordinaire. Now, Chypre Extraordinaire came out in 2018, and uh, there is some very interesting news that has come out on Chypre Extraordinaire that we're going to talk about uh, on the channel once we get into the review. Uh, but first, we have an unboxing, and we are going to do a quick unboxing uh, from a friend, from Nikki. Thank you, one of my fake fragrance god people. Uh, wanted to send me some decants, and I checked my um, P.O. box today, and here they are. So we're going to do this first. Let's knock this out, and then we'll get into what I think about Sheeper Extraordinaire. This is going to be uh, a little bit of a unique review, if you will, because normally I'm able to, you know, really go into each and every node, and, you know, I've given this three full wears. I'll show you the actual uh, Discovery Atomizer once we um, get into the review. I've given it three full wears, and every time I start to kind of make notes about the actual notes in the fragrance, I stop. And there's a reason for that, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But let me, uh, let's open this bad boy. So this is uh, from a friend. I'm very, very blessed to have such fantastic subscribers. We're almost to 2,000, sorry, 3,000 subscribers, and I still don't know what I'm going to do for my 3,000 subscriber video. Um... Yeah, this is from um, from Nikki. He goes by uh, Nikki T ninety nine. You'll see him in the channel. Thank you very much. Even a couple drops of some stuff I haven't smelled before are absolutely perfect for the channel. So I've every to anyone who sent me anything, thank you very much. Uh, you can see a bunch of the decants up there that are waiting to be talked about. And so if you have sent me something. Please be patient. I promise you I will get to it eventually. It's just a matter of when. Might be tomorrow. Might be a year from tomorrow. Might be six months from tomorrow. Two years from tomorrow. I promise I will get to it. So let's let's see what these samples are. Um, I've got a lot of videos that I want to do. And even a couple drops of something that I don't own gives me the ability to smell it, maybe do an early impression video, you know, something like that. So let's see what these are. This is gonna be fun. So we're gonna look into this. We're gonna look into what he sent me. And then we are going to talk about Chypre Extraordinaire, one of the most expensive Roja doves, or it was one of the most expensive Roja doves. There's a story behind that. We'll get to that very soon. So let's pull these little samples out. And again, thanks to the kindness and generosity of the, com of the community, uh, so first of all, we have, I'm just going to set these over here. Okay, so we have Santa Maria Novella Lavande Imperial. Are you guys familiar with this? Lavande Imperial. So Santa Maria Novella um, is a house that I've been very impressed with. It's a house that uh, Santa Maria Novella actually is kind of like the house that Creed wishes it was because it was founded in um, Lavande Imperial. Here we go. Floral and green. I believe it was founded in like the 1200s or something. The 11th century. I can't remember exactly when. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up right now once I'm done going through Lavande Imperial. But this is um, Bergamot, Ylang Ylang, Lavender, and Sage. And this is probably a very old fragrance. And so, you know, probably what I'll do is we'll take some of the fragrances I've never sniffed, some of these Santa Maria Novellas, and we'll do an entire stream on them. Some of these Aris Parfums, Miller Harris, another brand I've never talked about on the channel, Atelier d'Ors, another brand I've never talked about on the channel. These will make great... Um, these will make great, you know, early impression videos or Alexander McQueen Kingdom. You know, these will make great first impression videos for a live stream or something. So, uh, Santa Maria Novella Lavande Imperial. So, let me tell you about the house of Santa Maria Novella because it's the oldest house in, uh, basically, in perfume by far, I think I read. Yeah, it says the Italian luxury label traces its roots back to 1221 when a monastery of, of 
This name was founded in Florence and run by monks. So whenever you see these creed bottles and it's like, um, you know, you see these old creed bottles and you see 1760 right here. And, you know, it's a dubious claim anyways. Anyone who uh, has kept up with kind of what's been going on with the House of Creed knows a lot of stuff has been coming out now that uh, Olivier Creed has sold his house to BlackRock. All of a sudden, it's okay to say that, you know, Jean-Christophe Hero made Aventus or, uh, you know, it's okay to say that um, Julian Raskinet made Royal Oud or, or Pierre Bourdon made some of the previous creeds or whatever it is, right? All of this information is coming out. And um, Santa Maria Novella is the house that some of these houses are trying to pretend that they are. And, and that's one of the reasons I've really enjoyed getting to know their work, number one. Uh, and number two, you know, actually, let me just pull this out because there is a sample that I am in love with. I want a bottle of this so bad. This was sent to me by my good friend Armando, who I have a couple bottles coming from, some very rare vintage bottles I'm backing up thanks to him. But uh, he sent me a very kind decant. Look at the size of this decant. This is uh, Eau, de, uh, Eau Po de España. I believe it's supposed to be a P there. Po de España. Uh, Spanish leather. Skin of Spain. And I, oh God. This is one of the best leather fragrances I've ever smelled that I do not have in my collection. It's so good. So the House of Santa Maria Novella gets very high marks from me. So I'm very excited to try some of their other stuff. He also sent me uh, a fragrance called Novella Potpourri. Novella Potpourri. Um, Novella Potpourri. Ah, interesting. There's a Potpourri listed. This must be it. Year of the release is unknown. Citrus notes with lavender, rosemary, red thyme, and patchouli. I bet you these are going to be really good. What's interesting is um, their ingredient lists always seem very simple, but when you smell them, like I bought a vintage bottle of their Ambra, and it's fantastic. One of the best ambers. No one talks about it. Uh, it smells like there's real ambergris in there. Everything just smells so high quality. So that's a house I'm really, really interested in. Um, let's see. So we've got some, I'm trying to see if we can maybe lump some of these together. Yeah, there's a couple heiresses. Uh, so one of them, and actually this showed up on Persolaise's uh, video he did just the other day about Valentine's Day, I believe. Top. Oh no, I'm sorry, not about Valentine's Day. Was it Valentine's Day? I can't remember. It might have been like Old World Opulence or something like that he titled it. But this was on the list. This is from the House of Eris Parfums, and this is called Night Flower. So Nightflower, um, Persolet says he's very taken with, and I have actually never sniffed an Eris Parfum before. So that is going to be a, that is going to be exciting times for me. Nightflower by Eris, 2016 release. Ah, it's an Antoine Lee, one of my favorite perfumers. Uh, it is oriental, spicy, Bergamot, birch tar, he used that birch tar, pine tar thing to perfection in Les Abstraits' new uh, Desandres fragrance. Fantastic use of birch tar. And I think it's also in uh, Le Dule Exquis, he said. Cardamom, suede, Indian tuberose, cinnamon, patchouli, tonka bean absolute, and musk. Fantastic. Can't wait to get to sniff this. And then the other heiress that he sent me is MXXX. I, this is, uh, Rich Mitch told me I should buy a bottle of this. I've never sniffed it before. So this will be a great way to kind of gauge, you know, if I want to, to get a bottle. I know it's expensive. So even the couple drops are very much appreciated, Nikki. Thank you, my friend. Um, mm, I think this is going to be uh, something that I'll really like. Let me, uh, let me just save MXXX. Ma Bet is the other one that people have been telling me what, you know, since they know my taste, they've been telling me they think I would really like Ma Bet. Okay, and then I mentioned it before, but this is Alexander uh, McQueen Kingdom. Now, this fragrance used to get a lot of hype way back in the day. It's been discontinued for a long time, I believe. And um, its prices on bottles of this are extremely expensive, if I remember correctly. 
Alexander McQueen. Kingdom, here we go. Yeah, the production was apparently discontinued. So this is a floral, spicy, oriental type fragrance, it sounds like. Bergamot, mandarin orange, mint, neroli, orange, lemon, ginger, jasmine, carnation. Uh, rhubarb, rose, celery seed, amber, oak moss, and musk. That's good stuff. I can't wait to get to sniff these. Uh, and then we've got a Miller Harris, another brand I've never sniffed before. This is awesome, Nikki. Thank you. Uh, so Miller Harris, and this is called La Fume et a Bee. I'm sure I butchered that being a Texan, but Someone sent me an email uh, today when I woke up this morning, I saw it, and he said that I should be pronouncing uh, eau de toilette, eau de toilette. So I'm going to try to work on my French, you know, the, uh, the the Texas flag hanging over my head here won't allow me without some serious work. So I'm going to, you know, my native mother tongue uh, betrays me, but I will try. I promise I will try. Uh, so this is Miller Harris. La Fume, let's see, uh, La Fume et a B, is there a multiple La Fumes? Here's a La Fume, let's see, ah, there's a bunch of fragrances from Miller Harris, interesting, yeah, there is, La Fume et a B, okay, the original came out in 2011, the et a B version came out in 2012, this is smoky and spicy. Ah, this sounds like my kind of fragrance. Uh, this is cardamom, coriander, cumin, cistus, birch tar, frankincense, cedar, ash, oud, rose, and vanilla. That sounds promising. Very interesting. And um, then we got this Atelier d'Ors Iris Fauve. I think it's called Iris Fauve. So Iris Fauve uh, from a brand, again, I've never smelled in Atelier uh, D'Or's Iris Fauve. Here we go. Spicy Woody from 2017. Bergamot, Cinnamon, Iris, Patchouli, Haitian Vetiver, Cipriol, Myrrh, Cistus, Musk, and Liatris Spicata. That also sounds right up my alley. But I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if, you know, Atelier d'Ors or Miller Harris's, if they're, if they're good houses or not. I have no clue. I've never sniffed their quality of ingredients or anything. So, uh, and then we have, ooh, this one's going to be tough. Astat Majd, Astat Majd Al Sultan. I tried. I tried, folks. Ast Let me try to plug this into the database here. So that's uh, A S D A. Asdaf is the brand, and the fragrance is Majd Al Sultan. Here we go. I think I found it. Smoky Oriental. No notes. Smoky Oriental is what it's listed as. Interesting. All right, good stuff. And then we've got uh, Meleg Civet Cat Sheepra. Ah, someone was asking me about this just the other day in the comments. I know Melegs are also very expensive, and so this is one I don't have. So we'll do a we'll do an early impression or first impression video on some of the Melegs because I have four or five, maybe even six or seven samples. So maybe enough to drag it out over a couple live streams. So Meleg uh, Civet Chat <laughs> Civet Chat. Civet Cat Sheepra. Um, good stuff. That's exciting. Let me save that I actually have that so I don't forget about it. Civet Cat Sheepra. Ah, oh, there's two. Wait a minute. Number 50. This must be the 2020. This says number five, but it must have been number 50. All right. Let me save that I have a decant of that. And then... Finally, we've got Rasasi Sutur Wa. Ah, my uh, good friend. I say my friend, but uh, I can't call him a friend. But my uh, my 
one of my most trusted YouTubers that I actually watch and listen to, his name is AC from the channel Smell Good. He loves this uh, Rasasi Satoru. Why? He says very good things about it. I've never smelled the high-end Rasasi line, so this will be exciting. Um, let's see. Rasasi Satoru. Wow, there we go. 2017, spicy, sweet, mugwort, cardamom, saffron, pepper, cinnamon, guarjum, balsam, lavender, sandalwood, cedarwood, uh, guyac wood, vetiver, and amber extreme. Okay, good stuff. Thank you very much, Nikki. Seriously, I very much appreciate that, my friend. These are these are great. So I will put them up here with the rest of the samples that we need to get to. I promise you guys are giving me a ton of content to do and I really very much appreciate it um, if it takes me a while to get to the samples that you have sent me please be patient I promise there's a lot of other samples that as you can see I want to get to as well there's a lot of people that sent me stuff that uh, want me to get to their stuff as well so I promise I will try to kind of mix and match but um, over time, we will we will knock these out. I think it's a great way for, you know, to document kind of my feelings on a fragrance, my thoughts. Uh, the channel is about kind of documenting my journey and my thoughts. And that's all I can give you. And that's what I'm going to give you on uh, Sheeper Extraordinaire today. So, um, you know, I mentioned it before. And usually when I go into a fragrance review, so let me show you how much of Sheeper Extraordinaire I've worn. Doesn't seem like a lot, but actually, this is three full wearings. This is my third full day wearing Sheeper Extraordinaire. I track all of my wares, and uh, so this is the third time I've worn Sheeper Extraordinaire. And my channel uh, is going through maybe a little bit of a crisis in in one sense because what has ended up happening is I want to kind of do videos on as much as I can. I want to put my thoughts out there, and because I uh, pride myself on being an honest YouTuber. I'm not somebody who, you know, sells out for money. Uh, I'm not somebody who, if I get a free sample or a free bottle, I'm just going to say good things about it. And so I purchased this with my own money. Roja did not send me this. If you go to YouTube and look up Sheeper Extraordinaire, you're going to see all the reviews are pretty much from people who were given free samples to talk about it on YouTube. And, and my, and this is going to be an important one because it's one of the few at where, I paid for this with my own money and I can say whatever I want about it. And that's very important to me. And so um, the reason I brought up that my channel's in a little bit of a crisis is that uh, you can see I have a lot of bottles and almost none of these have full reviews on them. And the ones that I have full bottles are, of are the ones that I love the most. But in the back of my head, I'm also thinking, you know what? I have a full bottle of something like uh, Diagolev my favorite cheaper from Roja. Actually, if you just want to cut to the chase, I'll just tell you buy Diagolev, don't buy Sheeper Extraordinaire. That's pretty much, you know, you can end the video right there. Uh, but there's a reason, I'll go into some of that reason, but you know, the ones that I have full bottles of and that I love, I think I have time, right? You know, I, I've got a bottle, I've got juice, I've got a lot of juice, I, I can kind of take my time and talk about it and I don't have to be rushed about it. When I have a sample or a small discovery atomizer, I want to put my thoughts out there, especially when it comes to a fragrance that I uh, know I'm not going to get a full bottle of. This one I'm not going to get a full bottle of. I know that right now. And there's a couple things with the fragrance that I want to talk about. But first, I want to talk a little bit about something a little bit off topic because it. when I was thinking about this fragrance and... I've, like I said, I've worn it three times now. Every single time I tried to make notes for a potential early impression video. And every single time I didn't do it. I didn't do the video. Because every time I try to describe the fragrance itself. So you can say, okay, it opens up aldehydic. The bright bergamot in the top. The floral heart. Uh, the fruitiness from the peach and the plum. The um, spice from the cumin, which is there. You know, and the spice from the cumin will remind you a little bit of Rochas Femme. And the dry down, you get this, you know... Oak moss that obviously had the uh, bad stuff taken out, which is more expensive. And you get the, you know, you get a little bit of this Tonka vanilla woody thing in the dry down. It's a little bit warm with benzoin and a little bit of iris, but, you know, and, and then what do you say? What do you say after that about the fragrance? And so I decided I was going to do this video a little bit different. I was going to do this video on the way that it makes me feel. And I usually don't do my early impression 
videos that way. I like to give as much detail as I can. At hour one, it's like this. At hour three, it feels like this as it breaks down into the dry down. You know, as the base really starts to come out, it feels like this. I can't do this with this fragrance. And um, some could say it's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I could, but it would just kind of be boring because um, this fragrance, by the way, in case you guys did not know, uh, when this came out in 2018, Sheeper Extraordinaire retailed for 1,750 pounds, not dollars, pounds, okay? That is a hefty, hefty price tag. Really, a couple of the only other uh, fragrances that have a bigger price tag on in the Roja house, or actually the one of the only fragrances that has a bigger price tag in the Roja house would be something like uh, Roja's Hout Lux. You know, the one that is his personal scent, and that's $3,500. And um, and so the price kind of catches everyone's attention. Why is this fragrance uh, $1,750? And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the way that this fragrance makes me feel. And if you know me as a person, you know that Shepra is one of my favorite categories of fragrances. Actually, you could even drill down deeper and say Leather Shepra is one of my favorite categories of all time. And that's one of the reasons why um, Diaghilev gets the nod for me, okay? Because it goes more into the territory of something like Azure by Estee Lauder, one of my favorite leather sheepers of all time. I actually did a top leather sheeper list. You can go check it out. Fragrances like Azure and fragrances like uh, Robert Piguet's Bandi, which is also a proper leather sheeper. Uh, we're very, very close to the top of that list. And those are the type of sheepers that I like. I like my sheepers to be bold and daring. And I've got some quotes. Roja actually talked a little bit about, there's a video he did on his own channel where he talks a little bit about it. You know, it's the normal Roja, you know, quality video you're going to get. It's like six minutes and it's him sitting around his uh, perfumer's organ and spraying it and slow motion shots of the fragrance falling onto the atomizer. And, you know, him... Um, sitting there with the atomizer and of course Roja doesn't just you know Roja doesn't just sniff an atomizer right he sits there and oh you want to make sure that you you want to make sure that you move you know get it under your nose like this really you know look sophisticated don't just smell it you know and there's shots of him doing that and you know but I, I took some quotes okay so we're going to talk a little bit about the quotes and a little bit about uh, the way that the fragrance makes me feel. But I have to say that um, Sheepra is my favorite category, and therefore I like this. Inherently, I love it. It's a Sheepra. It's a Sheepra through and through. Um, uh, and, you know, there. as I was thinking about the way that this makes me feel, for some reason my brain kept going back to some of the experiences that I've had while I've had a channel. And I only started my channel about a year, year, year ago, maybe a year and a couple months ago, you could say, right, is when I started my channel officially. And in that time, I've kind of learned a lot about human behavior because some of the things when you start a channel you expect, you know, I kind of expected some people to uh, make fun of me in the comments. I expected some people to be harsh. I expected some people to be nice. And I got a little bit of all of that, you know, but more than ever, what ended up really uh, catching my attention is the people that were nice. There's so much kindness in Fragcom, you know, and it really shows the uh, level of depth and generosity of the human spirit. Just these samples that Nikki sent me, he didn't have to do that. You know, he paid for shipping with his own money and, um, you know, decanted his own bottles for me and so many people have done that you guys have no clue uh the kindness and and generosity the out out pouring go watch my um go watch my live stream yesterday on Serge Luton just to get an idea you know I did an unboxing of Serge Luton's you can kind of see a couple of them right here and you can see a couple of them right here I kind of rearranged some of this cabinet so I could make make room I needed room because he sent me 17 Serge Luton bottles uh, for free, as a friend, basically. And that is not the type of generosity that I was expecting at all. The kindness and the generosity of the community has completely overshot my expectations. The friendships that I've forged have completely overshot my expectations. On the other side of the coin, 
There's an ugly side though too. Uh, there is, of course, there's jealousy. People easily um, pick teams, if you will. It's very hard for people to be happy for each other. And um, I've noticed that, you know, there are people who you wouldn't have potentially considered friends even months ago, turn around and say bad things about you uh, or bad things about somebody else that you're friends with just because you're friends with them. I mean, there's that sort of depth of childishness in the fragrance community as well. And that, you know, extreme polarization really kind of got me thinking about the sheep in general. And this fragrance has an issue right now, at least for me, it has a big issue. And Roja Dove has an issue as a brand too, just a, just a high level conversation. Because this fragrance, and actually this one right here too, I'll take it down. This fragrance right here, these two... This is called Great Britain. So Great Britain and Sheeper Extraordinaire both come from the um, both come from this uh, Hout Lux collection with the purple caps. Okay, and they originally retailed for one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. All right, extremely extremely expensive stuff. Now, what's happened though? They've taken Sheeper Extraordinaire off of the Roja Parfums website. You won't see it if you search for it. And you will not see Great Britain if you search for it either, I believe. And what they've done is they have lowered the price. And so this is kind of where the, this is where the business, the ugly side of things come in. The beautiful side of the friendship and the relationship with the House of Roja Dove is that some of the scents are beautiful, they're fun to wear. Uh, the business side of it though, leaves a lot to be desired. And what I mean by that is, imagine you paid, actually, if you actually look up Sheepra Extraordinaire right now, just go to Google and Google it. Just go Sheepra Extraordinaire, okay? Roja Dove. And you will instantly see pop-ups, shopping ads on Google. Neiman Marcus, $1,865. Uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, $1,865. Scent Split, $1,865. But if you go to rojadovehoutperfumery.com, you can buy a bottle for 750 pounds. And that's the new price for Sheeper Extraordinaire. And that's the new price for Great Britain. Now, I much prefer Great Britain over Sheeper Extraordinaire. Um, it's more my taste. It's that, it's that leather, iris, you know, Russian leather basically is what uh, Great Britain is, but they both come from the same, you know, uh, line, if you will, or family of Roja Dove scents, okay? Uh, but the reason that I bring that up is that's a little bit of a problem for me. If you can arbitrarily reduce the cost of a perfume by $1,000, 1,000 pounds, excuse me, 1,000 pounds, even worse, uh, was it just a bullshit markup or... Did you cut the quality of the ingredients? What is it? How can you just arbitrarily reduce the cost of a perfume by a thousand pounds? A thousand, okay? Uh, and if you are Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, you might laugh and say, who cares? But for the average person who lives in the world and has to budget and you know money is not unlimited, uh, that is a, that's a big deal. Are you... Did, you know, when I bought this at discounters thinking I got a deal and I paid 900 bucks for Great Britain, now I can just get it for, you know, 750 retail pounds, right? The markup probably would get back to what I paid at discounters, but now our discounter is going to have it for 500 or 400. Uh, it's a little bit of a issue, trust issue with the brand as far as I'm concerned. And I think he's only selling it uh, in, you know, this... Roja Dove Hout Perfumery website or whatever it may be. So I don't know what's going on with Sheep Extraordinaire in Great Britain. All I know is the price went way, way down all of a sudden. And so, you know, it, I, I just got to thinking about the overall product because how it makes me feel when I smell Sheep Extraordinaire, how does it make me feel? I want to go through some of the quotes and I want to read the inspiration. So here's what Roja Dove's, it's, it literally says, Roja Dove's inspiration under rojadovehoutperfumery.com. It says, I have an inherent love for Sheepra scents, and I believe that. 
I find them compelling their magnetism impossible to escape. I agree. Impeccably refined and ultra-tailored, they command attention and demand respect in the most understated way. Inherently difficult to perfect, I love the accord and all the challenges they present working with it. In this composition, I've blended the mossy warmth of a classical shebra with an unexpected bouquet of sensual white flowers and a juicy peach note. For those who share my love of sheep scents, this contrasting blend of materials is totally unexpected. And the reason this creation is truly extraordinary. Well, just to go back, when I first saw some advertisements and, and uh, comments on sheep extraordinaire, I heard Roja Dove say that he wanted to try to make a sheep without any oak moss because he was worried that maybe if for his oak moss, you know, ban or, or you know, reducing the amount of oak moss. Oak moss is a very important aspect in the Shepra. Uh, it gives texture and it, oak moss is a very long lasting material. And if you go back to um, Greek mythology, Aphrodite, who hails from the island of Cyprus, Cyprus, Shepra, uh, the goddess of love and lust and all of the stuff that you can think of uh, in that category, slept on a bed of mosses that was the story that was the that was the uh that was the tale that she slept on a bed of mosses and so they use this mossy you know idea to create the shebra now uh koti did not come up with the shebra but he basically came up with the reference shebra in 1917 i believe and you know there are many shebras that have come out since then some of the most popular are stuff like um you know, Guerlain's Mitsuko, which it's okay to compare fragrances to Guerlain. There are some people that really get uptight about it, but it's okay. You know, everyone take a deep breath. It's not that serious. It's okay to compare fragrances to Guerlain. Um, to me, it's probably the easiest for the average person to understand. I mean, you could compare it to some of the older brands like Caron or, you know, Parfums d'Orsay, or, but if you make a comparison to Parfums d'Orsay, how many people are really going to know that, right? People know Guerlain still, they've survived. And, um, you know, the other thing about it is Roja Dove was very uh, influenced by what happened at Guerlain because he worked for Guerlain for decades. So, um, these are good, these are, these are okay comparisons to make. I don't think the comparison between Sheeper Extraordinary and Mitsuko, it, you know, holds a lot of merit because uh, Sheeper Extraordinary opens up with this very um, aldehydic floral with spice is kind of what I get. And um, I want to read you kind of the rest of the notes and then I want to read and then I want to just kind of give you my take on it. And unfortunately, this video... Well, maybe it doesn't have the depth of some of my other early impression videos. I really think it at least captures my feeling for the perfume and, you know, the way that it makes me feel uh, and the way that it makes me feel about the house of Roja Dove and some of the stuff that's been going on. So it says that Sheepers are warm and dry and fresh, sweet, very soft and sensual. And it says a unique take on the classical sheep or scent structure, a typical woody and mossy style of fragrance, which displays a refined strength of character. This creation transforms it into something new and extraordinary, paying homage to the sheep or's namesake, Island of Cyprus, a foundation of moss notes along cedar and sandal woods, bring the beauty of mother nature to life. This exquisite sheep or perfume features a bright burst of bergamot, mingles with the juicy voluptuousness of peach, whose softness continues through an indulgent heart of creamy tuberose and ylang ylang and rounds off the entirety with a velvety soft smoothness. Um, so, uh, that is straight off of the Roja Dove Haut Perfumery website. There were some quotes that I kind of took from the video that he did. He actually did a video uh, whenever Sheep Extraordinaire was launched. It's still up on Roja's YouTube channel. You can go view it. But he basically says that sheepers are made for people who, do, who don't like compromise. Uh, those are the people that will like the sheepra. And he says that the styles are, they like things that are black and white, basically. Okay. He then goes on to say that because sheepra structure is so specific with the textured dark mosses and that bright bergamot, that anything 
that is not in perfect balance and perfect tune with the Sheepra structure stands out like a sore thumb, okay? Uh, it incorrectly stands out and you will notice it. And the whole point of Sheepra Extraordinaire is to make nothing stand out. And uh, it's not an exact quote. I am uh, kind of uh, conceptualizing his thoughts into my own here. Um, but it's it's close enough on the mark for, for my point because this is where the rubber meets the road, okay? Uh, so for me, when I wear Sheep or Extraordinaire, uh, I get everything that's listed. It's the, it's the Sheepra. It's got a big floral heart, huge floral heart with fruits. And it opens up very aldehydic bergamot, very bright. It's a very bright opening. And usually I would prefer to wear uh, these brighter Sheepras, less animalic Sheepras in warmer weather. However, today it's in the 60s. Absolutely beautiful today in Texas. And this has gone perfectly fine, although I've noticed that this also does okay in the cooler weather. So um, here's the note listing, the, the full note listing, so you guys have an idea. And then, and then I'll kind of give you my two cents on it. So it opens up with aldehydes and bergamot in the top, and that's it. You get geranium, may rose, orange blossom, jasmine from grass, tuberose, langy lang, cystus, heliotrope, violet, black currant bud, peach, and plum in the heart. And the base is clove, cumin, patchouli, oak moss, cedarwood, sandalwood, benzoin, vanilla, tonka, amber, iris, styrax, leather, civet, and musk. And hell of a note listing, right? But when I wear it, uh, it wears... Um, it wears as if every single note is timid, okay? So that's the best way I can describe it. It wears as if every single note is timid. No note wants to come to the foreground. And, you know, if you're somebody that doesn't share the type of taste that I share, where I like the animalic fragrances, I like the challenging fragrances, I would much rather wear Diaghilev. He describes this as a big Baroque Shepra, and this is much more challenging. Um... You'll, you'll pick up bits and pieces of stuff like Azure, Bandi in here. Uh, whereas with Sheepra Extraordinaire, um, the Sheepra that I kind of thought of whenever I sprayed it, whenever you spray it initially, what ends up coming to your nose is this, uh, almost like this aldehydic spice. The spice begins to go away. The aldehydes remain. The aldehydes in here are actually pretty strong. They will remind you of a vintage floral fragrance in the in the realm of something like L'Enfant Arpege, right? Or something like that. L'Enfant Arpege is actually probably a... Um, it's actually probably a very respectable comparison. You know, people... Like I said, people will compare it to the Guerlain because everyone compares uh, these old style sheep rose to something like Mitsuko. And there is little bits and pieces there. You're going to get the pe uh, peach and you're also going to get plum in sheep or extraordinaire. Now the plum and the cumin will remind you a little bit of the way that you will smell in Rochas Femme. But see, the thing is, is when I wear Mitsuko or when I wear Rochas Femme, I am moved. I mean, really moved, internally moved. You know, like there's a war going on inside of me and I need to witness it all, right? And whenever I wear Sheep or Extraordinaire, I feel nothing. I feel like, um, excuse me, I feel like it is a well-made fragrance, but it has no, I was going to say it has no soul. When you factor in the fact that it feels like it has no soul and the price tag is apt absolutely astronomical, ridiculous. And there are those of you that will say you can't take price into uh, into talking about the fragrance. Bullshit. That's bullshit. You absolutely can take price into talking about the fragrance because we're not talking about, you know, Mitsuko sells for $80 and Sheeper Extraordinaire sells for $100, okay? We're talking about $10, $20. I got this bottle for $40. Bucks, an absolute steal for 2014 EDP of Mitsuko. Uh, didn't have a cap, so what? And, you know, it's, um, that's part of the issue with Roja Dub is value for money is extremely low. And actually, I got this vintage bottle of RPG. I actually spilled just a little bit of old fragrance leaked on it recently. 
But this vintage bottle of Arpege uh, X-Ray, which is one of the most beautiful aldehydic florals I've ever smelled. And even though this is not a Shepra, it actually shares a lot of, uh, I'm going to say, facets with Shepra Extraordinaire. And so if you pull up Arpege X-Ray uh, from 1927, you will notice that uh, it also opens up with aldehydes, bergamot, peach. But instead of uh, tuberose, there's honeysuckle. There's still the rose. There's still the ylang ylang. Um, you know, Roja uses May rose and NRP's had just list regular rose. Uh, there's still geranium. And the base is ambergris, uh, benzoin, musk, vanilla, sandalwood, patchouli, and vetiver. So while this is not a proper Shepra, to me, the two feel very similar in the way that they wear on my skin. And um, whenever he says, whenever Roja says that the ylang ylang and the tuberose add this creamy element to it, he's exactly right. I think there's a little bit of heliotrope that adds this, you know, um, almost like you can sink your teeth into it, you know, like the, it, it adds a little bit of depth to the fragrance. <laughs> he loves adding a touch of violet. And maybe there are some slight nuances that you can kind of feel here or there. Sometimes if you smell it at hour one, you'll get a little more of the spices still lingering. Sometimes if you smell it at hour three, you'll get a little bit more of the peach. You know, hour four or five, you're going to get more of the base, the vanilla, the, the oak moss, that's that sort of stuff. Um, I don't get the powdery, I don't get the powdery cosmetic makeup-y vibe that the iris usually gives to, to, to people in a fragrance. Uh, you know, you will get the woods, you'll get just a touch of patchouli, but everything is so gentle and relaxed. And, you know, going back to my, um, going back to my comment on, you know, human nature, and how there's a wide range of human nature. Uh, and some people that you may have considered friends will turn their backs on you. And others will stick with you through thick and thin. Uh, the generosity of the human spirit will surprise you sometimes. And the depth of how evil people can be will surprise you. You'll see all of that on earth and, and in people. And I like my Shepras to have a little bit of extreme in them. You know, I like something that is ultra butch, smoky, challenging leather. One of the most butch leathers of all time. Cannot believe this was made for women. Uh, Bendy. Uh, Rocha's Femme is an absolute masterpiece. And uh, I think it deserves much more acclaim. But I just, I love the way that the cumin and the, um, this has plum. And the plum, and it's like this, sir, it's almost like an oriental sheepra, you know. It's almost like a precursor to something like uh, MDCI's Sheepra Palaton by Bertrand Duchefort, right? Um, and, but every time I wear something like this, or even Diaghilev, I did a top 35 Roja countdown, my favorite Roja Dove fragrances in my collection. This made number one. And there's a re there's no, there's even no doubt in my mind, you know, if you ask me to rank my favorite Rojas, instantly Diaghilev's number one. No doubt about it. 100%. This is a masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, as is Mitsuko, is a masterpiece. As is Rocha's Femme, is a masterpiece. As is uh, Arpege, is a masterpiece. As is Bendy, is a masterpiece. These are masterpieces to me, personally, to me. Um, is Shepra Extraordinaire a masterpiece? No, it isn't. Uh, I wouldn't even say that uh, it's... You know, the, the, and again, this is why price matters because for the reduced price of 750 pounds for 100 mils, you could buy all of these fragrances that I've mentioned here to you today. We'll leave Diaghilev out of it because it's an insane overpriced Roja. Uh, is it worth that money? You have to come to that conclusion for yourself. But you could buy all four of these right here. And just pocket the extra six hundred dollars. Honestly, that's that's the price difference that I found these for. You know, in my hunting. Now I do look for perfume a lot. I periodically see what's available, but I got vintage RPG, Extra, Bendy, Rochas Femme, and Mitsuko 
with enough to put 600 pounds left over in my pocket for what they're asking for Sheeper Extraordinaire. And each one of these fragrances move me. Sheeper Extraordinaire doesn't. It just, it feels like It, it's a it's a well-made Sheepra, and I think this would smell amazing on a woman uh, that doesn't like animalic fragrances, wants to wear something that, you know, has some moving parts to it, but is palatable to, you know, somebody who likes uh, the floral, the, uh, you know, more simple Tonka, vanilla, that kind of thing, right? Benzoin and... Um, you know, they don't want the... There is civet listed. I get almost no civet. Now, to be fair, I like my civet real amped up. Again, hence my preference of Diaghilev. I like my civet really amped up. This is almost like sex on the skin, you know. This is this is a very overtly sexual fragrance. But that's what moves me. I want something that is challenging. I want something that is maybe even uh, risque, you know. Sheeper Extraordinaire is none of those things. Uh, it's not extraordinary to me. And that's part of the issue with Sheeper Extraordinaire. And every time I go to write this review, I have to stop because I always try to focus on ingredients. And I could say, yes, you get that Rosia Cystis. Yes, you know, there's a little bit of that Labdanum. He loves Labdanum in his perfumes. Uh, he loves sticking that violet note in there. Uh, the tuberose is creamy. Sure it is. Is there a hint of leather? Maybe if you really look. I don't want to look. I want my leather to be right there, you know. Uh, I want my um, I want my sheeper construction to be impeccable, you know. Uh, this is the most technically sound made perfume of, of all time, Mitsuko, hands down. And if you're somebody new and you want to take that next step, and you haven't explored some of these that I've mentioned, don't jump to sheeper extraordinaire. Don't give Roja Dove. 1000 don't give them $750 never mind $1750 okay uh and many people i think make the mistake the uh and it's a easy mistake for a newcomer to make you know they look at the perfume world and they say this is priced so much higher therefore it must be better and they make this assumption about it and that assumption is a faulty assumption. I can tell you that right now. There is only so much rose oil he can add to this. There's only so much ylang, ylang You know, the whole, oh, the jasmine from grass is the most expensive jasmine on earth. But he can only put so much. Ifra won't let him, you know, and he plays within the guidelines of Ifra. Uh, it's not like Russian Adam where he can put 40% of Taif rose oil in a, in a perfume. It's not like that with this. You're paying for the name. You're paying for a good that has basically turned into a Veblen good. And sometimes when I think it's worth it, I will tell you it's worth it. In my review of Diaghilev, which I don't know how I'm going to do it other than again to tell you how it makes me feel. Um, my review of Diaghilev, uh, I will probably say that to me, it's worth the thousand dollars that he asks for it. This is not worth it. This could be one hundred dollars, and I probably wouldn't buy a bottle. But do I enjoy it? Am I enjoying my little decant? Sure. But you know what? I would I would probably enjoy wearing any of these other. And I just grabbed these out of the blue. You know, these are just some fragrances that I wanted to illustrate. Uh, and so that is the problem that I have with Sheepra Extraordinaire. The ingredients are okay. Um, but it doesn't move me. It's uh, maybe for somebody who wants a cleaner Shepra. They don't want that dirty, big, baroque Shepra like Roja's uh, Diaghilev. Maybe Shepra Extraordinaire might be something to go for. But for me, it's a pass. It's a no-go. And I've been struggling on how to say that. Uh, and I think I kind of conveyed my, my thoughts on why. I, I took a winding road. You know, but I got there. I want my friends to, I want the, 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 I want to be with the human beings who are going to be there for me and have the generous spirit rather than the ones who are going to kind of, uh, turn their backs on you, right? Uh, the ones that are going to stab you in the back. And that's obvious, right? Everyone wants to 
be around people like that. But you have to look for certain traits. You have to know what to look for. And you have to, um, you then have to return that amount of humanity that has been given to you. You can't just take, you also have to give, right? And in the perfume world, that usually means also sending decants out to friends who, who are very kind to you. Um, and, you know, having trust with a house, a house that's going to take a, a, a fragrance price down by a thousand pounds, just like that, because of some unknown reason, you know, is that a house that you want to, is that a house that you want to just blindly go by? No, you really have to do your research on. And so that's why I wanted to do this video. Um, I know it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit, uh, shall we say, uh, out of the normal range of the kind of things that I talk about on a video, but that's how Sheeper Extraordinaire makes me feel. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit torn. On one hand, I enjoy it. On the other hand, I think it's not worth the price at all. And I think it's uh, kind of a little bit redundant. Uh, and And so... So yes, that's my thought. Uh, do try it. If you get a chance, sample it. You know, even these little samples, the problem is these seven and a half mil samples are like 180 bucks or something. So for seven and a half mil, you're paying more than a full bottle of one of the greatest sheepers of all time. So, so yes, I mean, that's kind of the issue. And so do let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, I, uh, obviously I don't think it's worth it. But uh, I would love to hear if you agree or disagree with me. We're almost at 3,000 subs. So to everyone who has subscribed, thank you very much. If you have any, uh, if you have any ideas for a 3,000 you know, subscriber uh, landmark celebration, do let me know. I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do. I'm going to hope to do a live stream today. And we'll see how that goes if I have some time. But thanks to everyone who's been watching and supporting and being there for me. And I hope to see you next time. Cheers. Bye, guys.